So you're changing it from residential into this thing called sui generi, which is basically what um, determines a big HMI. So when that happens, you're much more in the frame for commercial valuation. And that commercial valuation is the thing that's giving us that massive uplift compared to obviously what it would be as a residential. The other thing is we're doing a dormer, so we're like changing the, <coughs> the fabric of the building. Mm. That's the other thing they like to see. So We're literally going up an extra story. We're we? going up an extra story. So planning permission for change of use, changing the fabric of the building. This is going to be all en suite as well. So that's another thing that kind of puts you in that, in that frame. Um, the other way of thinking about it with commercial valuations is could a family come in and live in it after you've done what you're going to do? Mm. And realistically, a seven bedroom all en suite, you know, it's not many families that are going to come in and, and live and mm. live like that. It's yeah. more like a hotel. Yeah. So um, that's the reason why the, yeah. the, the figures stack up so well. Because on the lending side, when the lender looks at this, they'll say, okay, if I lend on this based on it's an investment valuation, so a multiplier of the rent that we're going to achieve, if we were to stop paying our mortgage and they had to repossess it, mm -hmm. would an investor come along and pay a premium for this because it's a ready-made asset, or would they buy next door and convert it themselves? So that's the, also what they determine. Mm -hmm. So. And off. So they want to know that whatever you've done is going to last, and often they'll. You know, if you've done a bank proof course, they'll want to see like a guarantee. So it's good to try and get that where you can, mm. or at least ask the builder what can we give you to give you some sort of guarantee. How long is usually the guarantee then, Rob? Normally ten years. Ten years. Yeah, okay. normally it would be a ten year guarantee. If you were to go to like a damp proof specialist, yeah. which is really the best way to do it, mm. so you rather than the builder actually doing it, they either sub that work out to a damp proofing company that all they do is basically damp proofing. Okay. Um, they will always guarantee the work. So we actually had to do that in this first property. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have the guarantee. This was a mistake we made. We didn't have the guarantee on that one. And the work wasn't really done that well. Mm. So when the buyers came in, one of their de de demands was mm -hmm. that we basically supplied this damp proof. So we had to redo the entire thing, oh, wow. get a damp proof um, specialist in. Cost mm -hmm. because he was the guy that was employed by the buyers who came around and picked holes in absolutely everything which was a, a pain in the ass for us <laughs> <laughs> and for them it was obviously good because they got like an HMO and we went around fixing everything so in the end they got the HMO that was kind of perfect yeah. so after that we were like we're having you on our <laughs> <laughs> so now we use him on like, literally yeah. every job and I just had a report back from him yesterday on a Property we're buying in Bolton, and it's I don't know how he's even managed to see some of the things. Like he he had a GoPro. That on a ghost, or is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> he's still there. Um, he's got a GoPro on like a massive, great big stick that he like obviously puts up above the level of the property to like inspect all the gutters. Wow, most building surveyors just walk in and say, yeah, the roof's fine. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly. crazy. Yeah, exactly. He's got all of that kind of what? gear going. So, um, yeah, he does like, like bolts and braces, like everything. And that's what you want when you're buying a property. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because as well, again, what I mentioned before, it's a negotiation point. So yeah. if he raises, you know, X, Y, Z, that's going to cost you this, then you can go back to the buyer, the vendor and say, look, you know, there was no way I could have found this out. I'm not a structural engineer. This yeah. is going to cost me a lot of money. Mm. Can we negotiate off the purchase price? Yeah. yeah. So it's a good reason to get a structural survey. And how much does he charge for that survey? So he's quite expensive um, on a big property. This is an eight bedroom. I think he's about 500 quid, wasn't he? Five, 600 quid for a big, for a big, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, not bad. It's quite reasonable compared to yeah. what I've heard other Particularly <coughs> that thorough in picking up yeah. those problems that are going to offset further issues. Mm. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah, so we don't mind spending that. The last guy we had was like 300 quid. So. Yeah. But I mean, about the plastic. I've got a shower. Mm. 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 So, so oh, I'm actually living here. Yeah, yeah, an old man. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh. 
so <gasps> it's even it looks like it's dipping a little bit as well or is that just my eyes no it definitely know. is i mean i'm actually well, a little bit oh yeah it is it, so. maybe we should yeah. make that it's out. a nice color though the top i do like the top yeah. like when i'm a hot spot you know what's funny though is that, that we've got a sofa turning up into one of our next projects which is that color this color mm. so yeah. blush pink is apparently the new gray <laughs> yes. i've heard yeah yeah but yeah, this, so this will be a, a bedroom with an ensuite. So Off this suite. is really good when you, an ensuite. So it's, it's really good when you come into a terrace house where you've got two really good sized bedrooms and a bathroom that's a really good size. Mm. So this would be over 10 square meters. So instantly we know we're going to turn this into a bedroom and then we're going to try and put a bathroom for this designated <coughs> room outside, mm. which is what we call an ensuite. So yeah. they still get sole access to that bathroom, but it's outside their room. So it works really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with this layout, Sarah, then, so obviously you've got the bath here, you've got the toilet there. Would you need to make sure that obviously, like, what's most important? Does the toilet again need to go in the same place? Or could you even have the, the toilet here or the bath? Yeah, you can do it. Well, any when, we're not going to make this. This is going to be a bedroom. Yeah. So, but if we were keeping this as a bathroom, no, you just yeah. gut this completely. And you can, I mean, services are already there. So it kind of makes sense to have it, got keep you. it there, right? Okay. Mm. Um, but you can change it however you want. I mean, we don't put bars in our HMOs because it's just... I'll tell you what it is, number one, mm -hmm. is the water. Yeah. Because if you think you've got seven um, tenants and they all run a bar, that is quite a load on your water supply. Not just the bills, but also what you've put in there, whether it's tanks or boilers or whatever. Yeah that hot water will run out quite quickly. But the other thing as well is the weight that mm. you're then putting, if you put seven bars all upstairs, the weight of that water, you know, on, on the structure of the property. Yeah. Um, so just always do showers. We've done one bath, haven't we? And that was on a ground floor out the back. Yeah. Um, and that was with, obviously, with a shower, shower in it. Um, but we've never done one since. The fourth HMO we've completed. Okay. So we did two five beds first, and then another five bed, and then this is a four bed. Okay. And then the other four bed that we're going to go to is the next one, and then the seven and eight bed. Right. That we took you to this yeah. morning. That's sort of the order. Right. <laughs> but how do you know what colour to... Well, how do you know what colour to choose, especially for bedrooms? Is there like a sort of range or a guide? You shouldn't pick like Barbie pink, you shouldn't pick like crazy blue. Like, what's the kind of vibe? I think you got to think like, what would you like to live in? Mm. Right? Would you like to live in a room that was all red? Probably not. No. It'd probably no. make you feel anxious. Yeah, they feel really angry. Probably. <laughs> so you want calm, like calm colours, like yeah. greens, greys, blues, like mm. light, you know? Or if this, I went dark everywhere here on the ceiling and the walls because we had the walls painted, the, we had the ceiling painted white, but it really just exposed how small the room was. So what we did oh. was we did the ceiling all dark, all the walls dark, so it feels nice and cosy when you come in here and it kind of like yeah. lends itself to the size of the room. So like what we were saying about the cinema room in Manchester, we're going to make that really dark and cosy. So you want to like kind of get down there and snuggle in, you know, whereas if you've got like a big room, you know, you can be a bit more playful with like patterns or brighter mm. colours. But I would just stay away from like your primary colours, like yeah. your reds, your blues, your yellows, <laughs> your bright greens and just Solid. do like calm, like neutral, neutral colours, but like calming. Do pastel colours work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? If you, if, and I think you've got to envisage yourself living in there and if you would like yeah. to live in there and if it's calm and tranquil and if you're unsure, like there are a lot of people out there doing really good quality design led HMO. So use other people as inspiration, go on Pinterest, go to Ikea, go on Ikea. They have lots of, any Ikea sort of interior design space is going to work because in, in t they, they design for the masses, mm -hmm. right? So using them as your inspiration is a really good tool. And I, you know, each property is different. Yeah. And mm. you know, I don't. I haven't studied interior design. It's just a passion that I love doing. So, but you can get inspiration from anywhere. Cool. Yeah. Good life. Well, I've got the uh, bedroom two door open. Yay! Oh, I think what might happen in some of these areas is there are like government grants that are given out for like you know yeah. improving your energy efficiency on your yeah. property. Yeah. There is a grant out most of the things. Yeah. So yeah, it might be that that was yeah. the case. You get these old knack of property mm -hmm. like spanking new windows. Mm -hmm. Still um, keeps them warm. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, we're basically this is going to get knocked down, extended. You can go three meters <laughs> from the back of the house under permitted development, mm -hmm. ground yeah. floor. So don't need to go through planning permission for that. 
three meters, was it? Three yeah. meters. Yeah. Is that up and backwards? Or? Not up. Just on one story. Okay. You can go if you if you're going up, then that's when you're going to planning permission <laughs> because you're then overlooking and affecting the light of your neighbours and all that kind of stuff. Mm. When you say change fabric of the building, do you mean yeah. like this part as well? No. So the fabric of the building. I mean, yes, technically. We will get to yeah. this extension, yeah. but what I was more referring to was we're going to do a dormer at the top. Yeah. So that's a real challenge. Again, that's done with the permit development. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't in increase the floor space of the loft by, I think it's something like 40 yeah. square metres. That's right, isn't yeah. it? Then you can do a loft extension under the permit development, so you don't need to go through planning permission. Oh, excellent. So, that's yeah. You know, it's just